Then we move to hydrocarbons that have double bonds in them. A double bond between carbon atoms is going to then drop a couple of hydrogens out of your molecule because when we take those hydrogens away, we can form a double bond. That's a reaction we'll talk about later too. So alkenes, they end in ene because there's a double bond present. Alk because they're aliphatic still and they are in chains. So the general formula is CNH2N for these. And what we're doing here is we are going to put, like for instance, here's a formula that's going to be C2H how many? Well, four, just twice as many hydrogens. When you build that, somebody says build C2H4, you need to put a double bond in between the carbons. That Lewis diagram, by the way, would be simply this. Now, I like to draw it with the stereochemistry implied as well because there's going to be 120 degree bond angles around these uh, atoms right here, which happen to have, by the way, hybridization that's called sp2 because you see the three effective pairs are present. Woo! So, 120 degree bond angles there, that's going to be called eth because there's two carbons and an ene. That's ethene. So, ethene is C2H4. Now, if I said, well, here, C3H6, draw that. Well, that's propene. So, because it's, there's three carbons and there's going to be a double bond, and I can tell that by this general formula CNH2N, although this could be a cyclo compound. We'll talk about it later. But if somebody tells you that there's a double bond present, you can say, well, all right, let's do it. One, two, three. Ah, well, remember, that could be propane right there. And then we just do this. We put a double bond line there, and there's propene. Pretty cool, hey? So there you go right there with the double bond line. That's going to be propene there. Now, what does that make this? One, two, two, bye. And then we go like this. Oh. Now, you're going to look at that and say, okay, I get it, chem guy. One, two, three, four carbons long. That's C4H8. There would be one hydrogen here, one hydrogen here coming off. And then there would be three hydrogens here and three here. 3 and 3 is 6, plus 1 here and 1 here makes a total of 8. Okay, here's the thing, but what, what, that double bond there, you know, that could be, that's a, that's a butte, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it's an ene. But here's the thing, that ene could have been, instead of there, here. Do you see that? Because now look, now let me do the skeleton again here, just 1, 2, 3, 4. I could have put, I, and I, this one, I do have a double bond here. And that makes this, 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 and that right there is a butene. But if you took that double bond and put it here, right, and then you count up your hydrogens properly to make sure that you've got the right amount on each, on each carbon there, you want to put five hydrogens on a carbon. Hey, that's a butene as well. It's an isomer of that other one. But this one does actually have different physical and chemical properties. So if it does, it's got to be a different compound with a different name. What are you going to call it? Now, we used to then just say, well, you know what? That's, an, that's the ene at the first carbon, so we're going to call it uh, one butene as opposed to putting out the second carbon in, two butene. But now that's changed. So here's what you do. It's not two butes. It's, 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 it's the ene that's at the now for this one, again, we're doing this one right here, right? Which is this right here. Uh, la, 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 that's fine, good, okay. Uh, whoops, Chook. there we go. That is this right here with the H's on it. There's two, the, there's one butte, but the ene, the double bond is at the second carbon in from that way or that way. So what we say is butte to Ene. I know it looks funny and it looks strange and it kind of sounds kooky, but that's the way you do it. It's a butte and the ene is at the second carbon in, so it's butte to ene. Yeah. So now let's do one big one here. So here's a condensed structural formula <clears throat> there, right there. And somebody says, name that. And you go, oh, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbon, so I'm going to say it's heptane or something. Nope. Heptene! Nope. You've got to do these really carefully to be able to figure them out. Just build it and, and it will work out just fine. So, here we go. Put it together. CH3. Get it? Now I'm going to do this little bit of a skeleton here kind of thing. Totally wrong. Got to put the H's on. I'm not going to do it. Shh. Okay. 
So there's a CH3, and there's a C with an H, and there's this another C that it's attached to with an H, I'll put it down there. There's a C that it's attached to with two H's, there's a C that it's attached to with an H, and it's got two CH3s coming off of this C here, which is CH3 and the CH3. Now look, it's not complete. Can you see that? Because this carbon has only three bonds and this carbon only has three bonds. The implication is that there's a double bond here, right? There's a double bond there to make up the rest of the uh, uh, complete octets for the carbons. So now we name this molecule right here. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, we've got the longest chain of one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's a hex. So it's a hex, and it's got a double bond in it. So it's an ene. Now, here's the thing. Where is that ene? It's at the second carbon. But then that puts the methyl branch at the fifth carbon. What takes precedence? Should we be counting from this end to give the methyl the 2 and then the ene would be at the 1, 2, 3, 4th carbon? Multiple bonds, whether double or triple, take precedence. They are the primaries here. And they pretty much almost always will be. So the deal is, when you see a multiple bond, you always include it in the longest chain and you start your numbering from where they are closest to. So. And you know what I mean by that? I mean, if this went down this way, and you had a multiple bond down here, or something like that, and a single bond here, the longest continuous chain would not be this way, it would be this way, because you'd have to include the multiple bond in the longest chain, just to tell you, okay? Now, this molecule looked like this, didn't it? Okay, so now, it's a hex, it's a hex, the ene is at the second carbon in on this end, so it's a hex 2 ene, the methyl ends up being on the fifth carbon, so there's a methyl branch. We put the branches in front, and then we put that number 5 there for 5-methyl-hex-2-ene, and that's what that would be from that condensed formula right there. Phew!